So why don't French women get fat? Hey folks, my name's Allie, let's get started. Years ago, when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I read the hardcover version of this book, bought it full price. Um, I couldn't find it, so I bought this one at a secondhand store. But today we are going to talk about Marie Guidiano's, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Her book is French Women Don't Get Fat. Now, of course, I'm coming at this from a ketogenic dieter's perspective, but also just your typical average American who has, um, I would say, an addiction to food and somebody who still struggles with that even though I've lost a lot of weight. So years ago I picked up this book because it just had that je ne sais quoi, right? We all want to know what the French secret is. We want to know how to be glamorous and effortless like the French woman. And I think that this book really kind of handles that really well. You know, she talks about how effortless weight loss can be if you're making these small changes. So Miss Guiliano, I'm just going to call her Murray. Mireille um, is a CEO, or at least was when she wrote this, of Veuve Clicquot, which is a very, you know, French uh, champagne. And she said in the book that she actually eats out about 300 times per year for business. So she's my girl. I like eating out too. I do like this book just off the bat. I do think that um, it offers just really simple, um, you know, sensical advice that should be common sense. Um, but let's talk about bits and pieces that I found. Both things that I agreed with and things that I didn't quite agree with. So she does start this book with her story about coming to America, I think she was studying, and how she gained weight while being here. Shocker, I mean that's, you know, Americans are known for being pretty fat. But um, she said that it was just like this awful thing that she gained 20 pounds and I'm just sitting there reading it and I'm thinking, 20 pounds? Like I wish when I was, you know, 320 that I had only been 20 pounds overweight. But um, you know, it just it kind of shows that perspective of <laughs> what is very overweight to a French person versus an American person. I mean, honestly, I don't think I'd walk down the street and notice that a woman was 20 pounds overweight. I think most people would think that that 20 pound overweight woman would seem pretty normal and healthy in American standards. So she mentions that the U.S. has a love of quick fixes and she talks more about that later. Um, I totally agree with that. We want, you know, the pill. We want the magic pill. We want the diet shake. We want it now and we want it really quickly um, for weight loss especially. And, you know, she kind of contrasts that with the French approach to losing weight, which is just smaller changes over a longer period of time so that you're living a more healthy lifestyle overall. I mean, common sense. Sorry, my hair been a long day. So she says that the French have a more balanced relationship with food. Instead of wanting big portions of one or two things, they want lots of things in smaller portions. And so they're kind of satisfying those needs in other ways. Instead of getting that super duper stuffed full feeling, they're getting that satisfaction from that variety of really good and wholesome foods, nutritional foods. She talks about um, how you should eat in the season, which I agree with. You know, if you're on keto, I say eat as many vegetables as you can fit into your diet, into your 20, 25 net grams of carbs per day. You know, eat all those vegetables if you can, because they're definitely healthy for you, no matter what other people say. I would say vegetables are always pretty good as an option for food. But um, yeah, so I mean, if you're eating seasonally, you're eating more fresh foods, obviously. So she says that you need three things to do this um, way of eating and lifestyle um, that she promotes. And first of all, you need this book, which just has all of her tips and her story and everything. You also need a food scale, which I totally agree with. It is necessary to know how much you are eating if you want to lose weight. And then she um, talks about yogurt. And so she said you might want a homemade yogurt machine. So there are four phases to this. The first one is the wake up call, which is when you say, hey, I'm overweight um, and I'm just gonna see what I'm eating and kind of log my food. Apparently this idea was given to her from Mr. Dr. Miracle, whom she talks about a lot. Um, so he told her to keep a food diary and she realized that she had become accustomed to the American uh, traditions of eating. You know, we like to eat standing and in a rush all the time and watching TV and we like our food fast. Um, and we like big portions. So when she moved back to France, this Dr. Miracle um, told her to keep a food log and she noticed that she was eating while walking more um, from her home to school. She was stopping at all of these pastry shops, patisserie, if you're French. Um, and so she was just overeating on, you know, basically carbs. But she doesn't tout this as a low carb diet. She says just make smarter decisions overall. Indulge a little here, cut back a little here so that you're not, you know, 
dealing with starvation or you're not going crazy from not having foods that you like. So in that way, she says it's a balance between narcissism and hedonism, basically, which is, you know, the narcissism, you want to look good, you want to feel good, but hedonism, you want to have a good time. So it's definitely, you know, pulling in here so that you can have more fun over here, which I find that I do have that. Um, it's kind of a struggle right now in maintenance for me from a ketogenic perspective because not that I want to eat non-keto foods, or, you know, I don't really care about cake or anything, but on the weekends I want to go out and have fun and I've talked about this a lot. So during the week I restrict a little bit more and on the weekend I just kind of don't measure things and I just allow what I want to eat basically. So I have my narcissist who wants to look good and my hedonist who wants to taste really good food. Now she did say something. Um, when she was talking about asking yourself some questions to get started, she said, why do you want to lose weight? And she said, a very American way of looking at this question is to answer it with, because I'm afraid of being overweight, which she says is not a French perspective. Um, that's the American perspective. But, and she says that you shouldn't be afraid. But I found in my own experiences, so I'm just sharing what I know, is that I had to be afraid to get that motivation going. I had to hit rock bottom. I had to be afraid of what people thought of me and how I looked and my medical issues. So I think having some fear is good, especially if you are very overweight or obese and you really need to lose some weight. So I think fear can work for you. It may not be the French way, but it's a helpful way. And then she also says, qu'est-ce qui se passe, which means what's going on. And so basically she talks about emotional eating, stress eating, um, and I definitely agree with that. You got to find out what is causing you to overeat and address that as well. So all of this was part of her first phase of the new lifestyle, which was the wake up call. And then her second phase is called the recast. And then the recast is basically where you are taking in a little bit of the things that you shouldn't be eating so much of. Like instead of having three pieces of bread with dinner, just have one piece of bread. Instead of having three glasses of wine, just have one glass of wine with dinner. Things like that. Instead of going out every day for um, a scone, you know, just save it for the weekend. Here she offers some good tips that I also agree with. Her Dr. Miracle suggested that she shops more often. Definitely, when you shop more often, you are going to get foods that you feel more comfortable just having in your fridge for a short period of time, AKA fresh foods. And you're probably going to start buying less processed foods, which have more just calories thrown in and you know, just more processing. So I definitely agree that you should shop more often. When I was growing up, you know, we shopped once a month and we spent 400, $500 on the groceries. Um, but now, you know, I shop once a week and so I think that that helps keep me eating more natural foods which are going to be lower calorie but also really delicious. She says, don't stock your food offenders, which is just the foods that you should not be eating so much of. I agree. Yes. I always say, say no once, say no at the grocery store. Don't buy that. You won't have to worry about it tempting you in the cupboard. I have to do that all the time with peanut butter, with cream cheese sometimes, with nuts. So things that I know I can overeat on and binge on. Sometimes I just have to say no. She talks about finding substitutions and I agree that if it just really helps you to use substitutions, I mean, I use artificial sweeteners, but I don't really eat a whole lot of substitutions of things like cake or corn or mm, chips or things like that. Um, or potatoes really often, unless it's like a special occasion. I don't know, because I feel like you're still holding on to those foods and I still hold on to my artificial sweeteners. So, you know, it's just, it depends on what you think you can get by with. She's also against the idea of very hard exercise, which I kind of agree with. You know, she mentions that the more you exercise, the hungrier you may feel, the more tired you may feel, which can also lead into emotional eating as well. Um, yes, totally. I didn't do any exercise losing my weight. I noticed that I naturally walked more and that's what she promotes is walking intentionally, but also um, just adding some more walking throughout your day. So, you know, parking further from the garage, using the stairs, but also taking that time out of the day to go for a walk. Um, you know, I do think that walking is one of the best exercises. It's good for you, so we should all be walking more. She basically said, um, any program that you perceive as punishment will fail. And I really liked that because it's got to be something that's sustainable. If you hate your way of eating, if you hate what you're exercising with, it's easier when you hate it to say, I just give up. And that's not what we want to do. We want to set you up for success when it comes to weight loss and getting healthy. And then finally, she also says you should reduce peu à peu. So little by little, you should be cutting back on things. And um, I agree. Um, I think in the beginning, you should just cut everything out just to kind of get it out of your life. 
but um, when you are losing weight steadily, I think it's necessary to cut out more and more, specifically calories and fat macros, because you might stall. So if you are steadily losing and you wanna keep losing, I would always say stick to about a 20% calorie deficit based on your height and weight and everything. So recalculate um, your needs after about every 10 pounds of fat loss. So her last stages, stages three and four, um, to me were kind of similar, but they're the stabilization and eating for the rest of your life. So she says that food is linked to culture. Yes, I definitely agree. Americans are so bad about food. Like I said, we eat fast, we eat anxiously, we eat distracted. So she says, you know, if you want to enjoy your food in less portions and smaller portions, what you should do is actually make it a, a little ritual. You should, you know, use those nice napkins, use the nice wine glasses, have a glass of wine or champagne if you want, you know, make it enjoyable so that you enjoy it without needing that bigger quantity to enjoy it. And of course, eat really good quality food. Now, I still like a good portion. I'm addicted to that full of feeling in my stomach. I talk about it all the time because I'm a food addict. Okay, so um, I agree that that would be ideal, that you just get to eat, you know, little things here or there and you're satisfied with uh, the variety that you're eating. But I really like a big salad with a big hunk of meat and it tastes really good and it makes me feel good. So, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with that one. Um, so I see where she's coming from and I wish I could be that way, but I just... Right now in my life, I like my big portions. I mean, I have been fasting um, intermittently for the past, ever since like the end of January, so the past couple months. So, I mean, it makes sense that I just have one big meal, but I'm just saying. And then she says that you should definitely eat three meals a day. Eh, I don't really believe that. Even when I was younger, I didn't really like breakfast. Um, when I first started keto, I was doing three meals a day, like a tiny breakfast, a medium lunch, and then a bigger dinner. And now I'm intermittent fasting and I've been all, everywhere in between. So it's just going to depend on what works for you, in my opinion. So again, back to the exercise, she says that Americans are really good at sitting and spinning. So we sit all day and then we try and work out for an hour and we're exhausted and we're miserable and we hate it. So it sets us up to fail. Um, but she says that the French woman, you know, she walks to work because she lives in Paris and she walks to the metro and then from the metro to her job. And you know, I do try and incorporate walking more. I believe in it. I think it's really good. And I'm not one to work out. When I get engaged, I'm going to start doing squats, but that's about it. And then, you know, she talks about, you know, setting yourself up for success in the future from, you know, children to teenagers to young adults to middle-aged people and then to the elderly. And uh, the one that I focused on because I felt like it would have affected me the most uh, was teaching your kids to eat right when they're young, setting them up with good habits so that they can succeed later on with those good habits. That's really important. That's something I didn't learn when I was young and it's what I think what caused me to be so overweight when I was an adult. She did talk about the French paradox, which if you've never heard of it, it's like the French eat cheese and wine and lots of bread and all this really good food and you know, they're very healthy and they don't get fat. I think that that is, they do eat a really high fat diet. And when they do eat carbs, I think that it's not an excess. So, you know, we know on keto, that's not the devil, right? That we've all been taught in the past. Um, so I think that that kind of shows through the French paradox is that you can enjoy your food. You can eat really tasty food in moderation. So, you know, if you are eating fat and carbs, as long as you're not overeating on things, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say carbs are the devil. That's not the devil for me. I just, I overeat on carbs, so I have to cut them out. And I eat higher fat and higher protein. So it's whatever motivates you and whatever is a long-term lifestyle that you can handle. And then finally, she says that you got to balance it out week by week. Yes, definitely. I mean, my lifestyle changes. Sometimes I'm intermittent fasting. Sometimes I'm not, you know, sometimes I'm withholding throughout the week so that I can go and celebrate a friend's birthday and just kind of go all out and have some fun. So again, it's just going to depend on, you know, you as a person. So your wants, your needs, your desires, your lifestyle, your body, you know, everything like that. And then she did have lots of recipes. I didn't really take the time to thumb through them. Um, a lot of them didn't seem keto friendly from the ones that I did look at. I mean, she had like this strawberry cookie thing. It sounded really good. But that is my French women do not get fat um, ketogenic perspective. I like this book. It does have that je ne sais quoi. It kind of sets you up with this mental image of just being the perfect French woman who's effortless but lovely and beautiful and amazing and so um, I bought this a while ago and I loved reading it and even 
on a keto diet now, I definitely see the merit that it has. Um, she does have some good tips for just common sense things. Um, but you know, it's not definitely a ketogenic book. She talks about eating bread and things. And so, um, if you'd like to check it out, I would recommend it. It is a good read and it does offer some nice lifestyle tips. Well folks, that's about it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I don't know why I'm yelling. <laughs> If you did enjoy, please remember to like and subscribe. That would help me out so much. And if you want to find me on social media, I will link all of that down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allie. Have a good one. Bye.